The differences between the M1 and the M2. Well, first of all, there is the type of gain control, pots on the M1, rotary switches on the M2. The other difference is the function of the first push button, the button that's right next to the gain controls. Again, on the M1, it's a gain range switch. It's a high gain switch. You either are in the low gain mode or the high gain mode. And on the M2, since a range switch was not required, you get either a 20 ohm mic switch or a 20 dB pad switch, depending on how you order it. A 20 dB pad switch is pretty self-explanatory. If you've got very high levels coming into the preamp, too high to deal with conveniently, then you pad it down. You attenuate the signal by 20 dB before it reaches the input transformer, so it's just at an easier level to handle. The 20 ohm mic switch is a switch that was actually showed up first on the Jensen Twin Servo 990 mic preamp, which I started making for Dean Jensen in 1988. And it was sometimes referred to as the Sheps switch as we were uh, working on it as a co-development back in 1988. The uh, function of it is some microphones, most microphones typically have an output impedance of around 150 ohms. And the Jensen input transformers are optimized for that impedance of microphone. If there's a mic that has just a 20 ohm output impedance, which some of the chef's mics do, and other mics as well, then uh, it's not quite an optimum sort of match between impedances. So what the 20 ohm mic switch does is very simple. It adds a couple of 68.1 ohm resistors in series with the signal as the signal is approaching the input transformer so that the input transformer is now looking back toward the microphone and instead of seeing just a 20 ohm mic, it sees the 20 ohms of the microphone plus the two 68.1 ohm resistors that are in series, one on the plus side of the signal, one on the minus side of the signal and it makes the 20 ohm mic look like 150 ohms so you get the optimum matching again and the difference would be if you had a 20 ohm mic but did not have the 20 ohm mic switch or did not use the 20 ohm mic switch it would have a very slightly rising frequency response so that it might be perhaps a db or less elevated at 15 kilohertz compared to a reference of 1 kilohertz so a very slightly rising frequency response if you did not have that switch or did not use it. When you activate that switch, because of the better matching of impedances, if you get into the, the resistances, the inductances, the capacitances of the impedances of the mic versus the impedances of the, of the transformers, etc., then uh, it, it either optimizes things or doesn't. So you either have the rising frequency response, ever so slightly rising response, without the switch, or when you activate the switch, it compensates so you have flat frequency response so that it'll be the same level at 15 kilohertz as it is at 1 kilohertz. So very slight difference, and basically uh, you decide whether you want the features of the M2 versus the features of the M1. But that's the function of the, uh, the, the switch on the M2. It'll either be the 20 dB pad or the 20 ohm mic switch, and you have to choose which one you want.